Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. The design view of a report is the view in which you will spend the majority of your time as you create your report. When you create a new report, it is displayed in design view by default. You can see the design tab in the upper left corner of the report design section. After you have previewed a report by using the print preview function, there will also be a preview tab in the same area as well. You can then click the names of the two tabs to switch between the two views. In design view, you will not see the actual data within the report as it will be displayed when printed, but you will instead see the fields and other data objects, as well as the various sections of the report into which you will place these objects. The default design view is divided into five separate sections, which are labeled at the left side of the design view. You will also see both a horizontal and vertical ruler surrounding the report design view as well. The various sections are where you place the report's data fields and other report objects. When you place a data field into a report section, its display is in some ways dictated by the section into which you have placed the data field. We will now examine the default sections of a report and how information placed into those sections will display when you preview the report. So first there is the report header. Fields of information and other report objects that are placed into this section will display only once at the very beginning or top of a report. So this is a common location for report titles. Next is the page header. Objects that are placed into this section will print at the top of each page of a report. This is a common location to place report dates, page numbering, and other common header information within a report. You may also have a group header. If you group information that is the same within a field, like all the same states within a state data field, for example, you will then be able to enable a group header where you can place information that would repeat once at the beginning of each set of unique values found within the grouped field. You also have the details section. In this section you place data fields and objects that you wish to have displayed once for each record or row in the underlying table or query. This is often where the bulk of the data within a report will appear. Next you may have a group footer. Once again if you group information that's the same within a field, once again like all the states within a state data field, you can also enable a group footer where you can place information that would repeat once at the bottom of each set of unique values found within the grouped field. Common location of subtotals and summary functions that you wish to perform over each set of unique values found within the field by which you created the group. You also have the report footer. Data fields and objects that are placed into the report footer will repeat once at the end of the entire report. This is a commonly used area to display grand totals and other summary functions that are performed over all of the values in a report. You also have the page footer. Objects placed into the page footer will print at the bottom of every page of a report. So this is also a common location to place report dates, page numbering, and other commonly found footer information within a report. Now in Crystal Reports 2013, you can see a pane at the far right side of the application window called the Field Explorer. In Crystal Reports, you can view panes, which are called Explorers, on screen as you create reports. These explorers allow you to view information in a collapsible and expandable outline format. You can click the small plus and minus symbols next to the various items listed to expand and collapse information. You can toggle the display of the explorers on and off by clicking the view command within the menu bar and then selecting the name of the explorer that you wish to view from the drop down menu that appears. The explorers are listed in the third section from the top 
within the drop-down menu. It is worth noting that the explorers can be moved by simply clicking and dragging on the small title bars at the top of each explorer. They can be either floating over the design area or embedded at the sides of the application window in the same way that toolbars can. You can close an explorer window by clicking the X button that appears at the right end of the small title bar above each explorer. You can then enable their display again by selecting View from the menu bar and then clicking on the name of the explorer that you wish to view. The Field Explorer is a frequently used tool in Crystal Reports. This explorer lists the various types of fields that you can insert into your report. The seven different types of fields are database fields, formula fields, parameter fields, running total fields, group name fields, and special fields. You can use the buttons in the small toolbar at the top of the explorer to perform different actions on the selected fields. The Report Explorer represents the various report sections in an outlined format. You can click the name of an object listed in the sections to select it using this explorer. You can also perform additional actions on an object listed in this section by simply right-clicking the object you wish to manipulate and then clicking the desired command to perform in the pop-up menu of choices that appears. Like the Field Explorer, this explorer also has buttons available in the toolbar at the top of the explorer, which you can click to perform various actions. If you have a connection to a Crystal Enterprise server, you may then make use of the Repository Explorer. This allows report designers to save various kinds of report objects to the repository so that they may reuse them in future reports. You can save text and graphic objects, custom functions, and commands or queries to the repository. You cannot store formulas to the repository, however. Also note that there's a toolbar at the top of this explorer that contains buttons that you can click to perform actions on the selected objects. You will also have access to the Workbench pane. This pane allows you to create projects which contain reports. This allows you to easily add, remove, sort, and organize reports into manageable groupings of your own design. You can use the buttons within this pane to create new projects and add reports to the groupings that you create. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.